Hello everybody, I'm back with another video about how to go souling. And in this video, I want to talk about how to maximize the harvest, or in other words, how to get more people saved when you go souling, right? Jesus said, herein is my father glorified that you bring forth much fruit, so shall you be my disciples, right? So Jesus doesn't want us to just bring forth some fruit. He wants us to bring forth much fruit, right? He says that's what glorifies the father. So I want to talk about some tips about how to get more people saved when you go souling. Now, uh, it's pretty simple to understand that if you preach to more people, you're going to get more people saved, right? If all you're doing is just walking door to door and putting cards on doors, you're not going to get that many people saved, right? You want to be able to uh, preach to as many people as possible, right? Because how shall they believe in him who they not heard, right? So the, the trick to getting more people saved is, first of all, you have to make sure that you're preaching to more people. So I briefly mentioned one of these uh things in the, the the end of the last video and that's when you get somebody saved right you go to their door you preach to them they believe they call in the name of the lord try to share it with their family as well right so if you go to a house an apartment and they they got saved ask hey is there anybody else here that i could share that with right a friend uh, a family member you know wife husband brother sister kids parents whoever anybody else in the house can i preach to them a roommate maybe Right. And sometimes you can get two, three, four people saved in the same household. If you do that, I watched it happen before where you go to somebody, they're receptive, they're excited, they got saved. And there's other people there, whether it's, you know, family members or roommates or whatever, and they want to hear it, too. Right. They're much more likely to receive the gospel if they just saw that their friend is like condoning it or excited about it. Right. Because like, let's say you go to to the, the door and you, you get a, a man saved, right? And, you know, he believes it. And then his wife is on the inside. And then he calls his wife and he says, hey, honey, listen to this, right? She's much more likely to listen to it probably if her husband's condoning it, if he's telling her to do it, you know what I mean? So that's a very good way to get multiple people saved just in one house, right? Another thing uh, that could also work is preaching to groups. Now, one-on-one -on -one is easiest, right? It's easiest to just only just you and one other person because of the fact that you can, you know, they can pay attention to you more. But sometimes you can get several people saved at once with just one gospel presentation. Now, you're going to have to use uh, some discernment when doing this. And I want to talk about this in the next slide, uh, that there are some some tips that you need to put in practice when preaching to groups, right? If you're sharing the gospel with more than one person, right, like two people, three people, four people, then it will be more difficult to make sure that all of them get saved. And sometimes well, maybe only one of them will get saved or none of them will get saved, right? Even if you preach to like four people at once, right? Now, if there are more than two or three, the chance of distraction and interruption goes up, right? So you want to limit it to a certain group of people. So here are some tips to, uh, to be effective when you preach to a group, right? Number one, focus on one or two main people at a time right? Whoever is paying the most attention and getting it the fastest, right? I, I want to use a few examples uh, in order to uh, to make this point. So when I was in St. Lucia a few weeks ago, there was a group of like seven kids. Uh, they were like maybe, I don't know, between like 10 and 15. They were like, you know, younger teenagers, whatever. And they were coming back from school and I stopped them. And there was like two or three of them who were really actually focusing. But then the other ones, they were like, kind of on and off answering the questions. Some of them were kind of like wandering around or they were just looking at other things or weren't paying attention. There's really only just a couple people who were actually paying attention the whole time, right? So the, the group of seven was there the whole time in the general vicinity, but not all of them heard every single, single thing that I said. Some of them were not paying attention. So that's just going to happen when you preach to a group of seven people. They're not all going to get saved. So in that one group, only three of them got saved. Um, and then later, thankfully, we saw them again the next day. And we got a couple more of them saved also. Uh, me and this other guy named Daniel, we got uh, a couple more of the people in that group saved, those kids. So that was good that we saw them again. But the point I'm trying to make is if you're preaching to seven kids, especially, especially kids, you know, because they get distracted easier, they're not going to pay attention. Not all of them are going to pay attention, right? They're going to be distracted. So don't preach to seven people at once and expect all seven of them to be saved, right? Another good tip to use when preaching to groups is to ask different questions to different people, right? And learning their names will be helpful for this. So for example, I, I put a picture of, of me preaching the gospel actually to three uh, teenagers right here. 
This was in a, a town called Eloy in Arizona uh, last about, actually, this was almost exactly one year ago. Um, so these three kids, they were all paying attention, right? Obviously, they're a little bit older, so they're more mature. They're not like, you know, 10 years old running around, that kind of stuff like in St. Lucia, but they're a little bit older. They're more mature, so they were paying attention. You know, whenever I answer was a question, or asked a question, they were like, yes, sir, and all that kind of stuff. You know, they were pretty receptive. Well, the thing was what I did and what I usually do when I preach like a group of three is I'll learn their names and then I'll ask them a question and I'll say their name. Like, for example, I'll show a verse and then I'll say, so according to what I just said, John, what do you have to do to go to heaven? And then only John answers because I said John, right? But then I'll give another example like, so if somebody believes in Jesus, but they never go to church, they never get baptized, Mark, you know, where are you going to go when you die? Oh, I'm going to go to heaven, right? So it's good to kind of like interact with all three of them or two of them or however many uh, at the same time to make sure that you're not just um, like certain people are not being singled out. Now, sometimes you can only focus on one person. Uh, you think that only one person is paying attention and the other person seems like they might not be receptive, but then they actually do get saved. This happens sometimes as well, right? So one other thing I like to do is ask the questions individually, right? If one person is struggling, just simply preach the gospel to them again after you're done with those who get saved. So what do I mean by that? So like, let's say, for example, you're preaching to three people, right? And let's say this guy, you know, just as an example, this guy, you know, he's not getting it. You're showing it to him. He's not really understanding it. Then just focus on the other two, right? They might be understanding it better, right? Get them saved first. And then after you're done with them, go back to him and share a few more verses with him at the end to make sure he got it, right? Sometimes you preach to a group and you have to preach the gospel a couple times, you know, to get all that group saved. Sometimes you only have to preach it once. So you have to use discernment when you're preaching to like two, three, four people. Um, but understand that it's very rare that you're going to preach like three or four people and they're all going to get saved at once. Again, that's going to happen sometimes. That's what happened with these three uh, gentlemen right here, but that's not always going to happen, right? So definitely preaching to groups, asking for family members, things like that. These are great ways to, to increase um, salvation numbers, right? To get more people saved, to basically be more effective in the use of your time. Uh, but again, it's not just about the number. It's about actually genuinely getting people saved. So you want to be careful in the way that you do it and, and don't just, you know, preach and then just ask like five kids, you know, all the same questions at the same time and expect them you know, for example, sometimes I'll preach to people and they'll answer the question at the same exact time. So I'm like, okay, well, they're all paying attention. They're all looking at me. They're all answering the question. They're all playing along. So I know that they're all understanding. They're not just repeating what they heard from their friend. But sometimes you'll have a group of three, right? And you'll talk to one person and you say, hey, what does the Bible say you have to do to heaven? Believe in Jesus. And then the other two, they didn't say anything. And so you turn to them and you say, what do you have to do to go to heaven? Believe in Jesus. So, well, they, maybe they got it, but they could just repeating what they just heard from their friend. You know what I mean? So that's why you want to make sure they're all paying attention. If one of them isn't paying attention, just focus on one person at a time and then go to the other guy later, right? So these sort of things you have to keep in mind when you're preaching to groups. So thank everybody for watching and goodbye.